guys welcome back to today's raw video from smart mouth beauty and usually our raw videos are unedited and unrehearsed and usually sometimes one of us is ranting but anyway today like i promised we're going to talk about my tattoos so on my what makes me weird video i had asked if you all were interested or cared about my tattoos and most of you said yes and some of you all, all had been even asking for this kind of video for a while now i mean it's no secret that i have tattoos you all have been seeing them for three years of our youtube journey so today uh i'm gonna try to talk about them i usually don't talk about them like in the hair salon people always you know want to find out what they mean like like something has to mean something in order to put it on your body and I get that and I get that uh, but only for your first one <laughs> once you pop that cherry uh, it the, the the thrill is gone kind of thing it's it's like the intensity of what they are supposed to mean has already been disrupted and you you put so much or i i put so much thought into the first one of course and, and, and all of them don't disregard that i didn't put thought into all of them however you you build up this what's my first one gonna be is it gonna mean something to me in 10 years 20 years 50 years is it gonna be important is it gonna be relevant to who i am you know so there's lots of thoughts on your first one at least for me but after that initial adventure and the intensity kind of wore off and it became normal um the other part of my tattoo journey actually has been quite a roller coaster which is awesome that's one of the big things that i love about my tattoos is you know sitting it at 44 years old i'll be 44 in about a week um sitting at almost 44 years old I can look down at my body and experience that roller coaster of my life as art on my body and specifically some of my tattoos are very morose they're very dark um, even though I'm very colorful and bright uh, which I love color on my body um, but some of them have a, a deeper meaning of something that I was going through at the time. And, you know, I might not share those particular meetings with you, but it's interesting how those will be a darker meeting. And then right next to it, you'll see the journey of kind of coming back up and putting things on my body that are joyful and playful and fun. And then you'll see it twist back down into maybe a, a challenging part of my life that have created um, the story of art on my body and then kind of come back up again. And so it's this, as life is, a roller coaster of stuff that I've kind of captured and so it's interesting again okay so here all right so I'm gonna start with my arms I think because my first couple of ones are on my back and so I don't feel like going there um but and on my butt okay on my butt so I'm not gonna show you that but I will share with you parts of my arm that I think are really, really special. Um, one of them is this this top piece. The, the top piece was done in sections. And so if you kind of look at where my arm, um, excuse me, where my, I call it my elbow pit, where my elbow and my elbow pit are, you'll see this, this like a uh, purpley, pink star that was actually only like a half of a star and it was cut off right about here it's kind of hard to see um, where we kind of put a stop at this at this top piece um, so basically the top piece is different color pansies and um, different I wanted sprinkles uh, some sort of like uh, I didn't want it to be filled in solid I still wanted to see skin through it so the artist um, created 
some whimsical sprinkles and actually I had take I remember I had taken in a ribbon like what you would put in your hair maybe a package ribbon it was a thick white ribbon and it had these sprinkles on it of stars and little asterisks and things um, we then decided to connect the pansies with the vine and he put little hidden ladybugs it, it's just it's just the coolest thing so I'll get closer so you can see like there's a ladybug and you could see all of these like sprinkles and stars and hearts. So there's one pansy, another pansy. There's a little ladybug sitting. Little squiggly doos, open stars, another pansy, I think. Oh yeah, down here. Little sprinkles, little squiggly doo. <laughs> a little skull and crossbone, which I love that he added because he knows me. So one of the most interesting pieces that I think is this. I love this little thing right here. So when I first saw it, I thought that it was sort of like this crescent moon. I didn't understand it. And then he explained to me that in the future, this is a vine coming off this pansy. It's wrapping out of the line and tips back in. That is the tip of that vine. I thought that was incredible because I, I, he, he wants me to, you know, be able to bring it across if I wanted to. Now see these three little dots. That was one of the most painful freaking things ever. I called them my pit sprinkles and that hurt so bad. Those three little dots, you know, when it comes to um, tattooing, especially something really small, it's usually just kind of one, maybe two needles just to make that little poke. And it's the same theory of the whole laying on the bed of nails. So when you lay on a bed of nails and it's evenly distributed over your body or over a large surface, it's less painful. But if you step on one nail, it, it's going to hurt. So it's kind of that same principle with tattooing. And normally that's why tattoo artists will say, um, that the black outline usually hurts more than the shading or the coloring and that's because with a black outline they use one or two needle uh, kind of like this to, to make these lines and then shading is usually like a four needle um, cluster that kind of will do shading and it's it's um, so it's dispersed a little bit it's not so acute so that's the top um, and that was even though it looks playful that's that's not as playful there's a, a, a huge meaning behind that that was just part of my venture of kind of um kind of losing a friend and uh, but so I wanted to continue on so I that that tattoo artist is in Fort Knox Kentucky or Radcliffe Kentucky it's kind of the you all might know it as Fort Knox we know it as, as Radcliffe but those of you who don't live in Kentucky, the nearest places um, to it would be Fort Knox that you would understand where it is. So I drove, um, I guess that's about 45 minutes from Louisville. I drove about 45 minutes each time and I probably went down there about eight times to, well, maybe, maybe not eight, probably like six to have him work on it and touch it up and add color and, and things like that. So we did that in stages. Uh, he got very sick and uh, his tattooing is very limited and so I wanted to find a color specialist here in Louisville that was closer so I did a lot of research and found thankfully Dennis Pace and he is my tattoo artist that I adore and just think he's so super talented and just really we've come to understand each other where I can kind of email him and say hey let's do you know blah 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 and I don't even have to approve it I just show up and whatever he has drawn out he understands me so I just like okay let's do that so I when you develop it's just like a hairdresser when you develop that trust with someone and they get you you can just sit down comfortably and just let them do your hair in this case I let them you know do some ta him do some tattoo work and I just love it so I sought him out and begged him to take me on because a lot of times tattoo artists won't um, finish an art piece from another tattoo artist it, that's and I get it I get it so we decided to go forward with the vine so he ended up doing he finished out that star and he ended up bringing this vine down 
and you'll see uh, I have some unfinished pieces that it just is what it is okay it's just not finished whatever okay so we brought this down and I thought let's not let's not do more pansies let's do cupcakes because I was in a really fun whimsical place so instead of bursting out on the leaves flowers he bursted out these same leaves with cupcakes so there's one cupcake <laughs> and then the vine comes down here's another cupcake so people think that that looks like a shell but it's actually cupcake wrapping like a um, little wrapper of the cupcake anyway so he brought the sprinkles down he gave me some more shading this is actually a lollipop um, that's supposed to have like a swirl in it but that's not finished I have some other candies um, and things that are not finished but he added the gumdrops very whimsical there's another um, sucker that's supposed to kind of be back here is a gumdrop you know a big piece of hard candy little candies um, I have a hidden number three in there um, <laughs> uh little hidden signs here and there that he did and then added in those same kind of sprinkles to kind of mimic what was going on at the top so that's kind of where he kind of continued that on and so it was really cool to kind of see the connection of the two where the top is is kind of a loss for me but the cupcakes are just so silly they don't mean anything they just make me smile and it just made sense to kind of grow cupcakes I don't know like growing cupcakes from the vine just seems really whimsical and silly and fun and I just wanted it so then then <laughs> Um, continuing down my arm uh, I did I do have other pieces from other artists you know even though uh, Dennis Pace is my ultimate tattoo artist and he has free reign I have with other friends gone to other tattoo artists if we were gonna you know get something together or just for fun or you know I have no problem I have plenty of real estate on my body I have no problem you know going to somebody else and having them do something silly or fun you know so I remember um, an ex-boyfriend of mine and I went to go and get some tattoos not matching tattoos but some tattoos I want to say I think it was like a holiday I want to say it was like New Year's Eve or something crazy I can't remember it doesn't matter so I ended up getting my version of skull and crossbones so my version of skull and crossbones <clears throat> is gonna have to be pink in some weird way and so I wanted a pink skull that was very girly and the crossbones that are behind the skull I decided to do scissors like shears in for like cutting hair so I I wish that the shears were a little bit bigger but um, I'm happy with it it's it's it has been there a long long time it has faded tremendously and um, I love her I actually named her she is Sally McSizzerton and so I'll show you too so this is her so she's got this purple bow so you can see part of her scissors is here and then that opens up down here which just looks end up looking like a tooth but that's okay and then this so it's opened up behind her but she has little heart eyes she's just so cute that's Sally she's my friend actually I think Dennis might have touched her up a time or two it doesn't matter you know I just sit down let him do whatever okay so going on with my um, journey of being you know being a hairdresser and kind of having that as my career um, we had designed designed another piece that had another tool of the trade if you will um, when it comes to hairdressing I decided to do like a razor blade um, where they you know you can cut hair with a razor um, or a straight blade is what they might call it it's it's also in barbering or like a, a barber tool but um, I wanted to find <laughs> uh, I wanted to find Sally a boyfriend so Dennis is really really talented when it comes to skulls which I love and so we did kind of this slightly Latino sugar skull um, and, and he's looking down at, at Sally 
uh, like a hubba hubba or something. Okay, all right. So this is this is this is Alejandro, and he's right here. You can see his little mustache. And his teeth detail are just beautiful. But he's looking down at Sally like, "Hey, Mama, hubba hubba." It comes down with these flowers, the same type of leaves. And then this is the razor blade. So I just love him. He He's just so colorful. I hope that it's picking up. And I love this flower on his forehead. And they added the sprinkles to connect it all in. But he's looking down at Sally. Hubba hubba. Okay. Okay. <laughs> to finish up on this arm, um, uh, years ago I, you know, got into a TV show called Invader Zim. And it's a, an adult cartoon, not an adult cartoon, but it's a, a cartoon made for adults, meaning it has very weird humor, um, very adult humor where, you know, you might not understand it unless you've lived a little. Um, but it's called Invader Zim, and basically it's about this alien and his robot comes down to Earth and tries to take over the intelligence of Earth. But Anyway, the little robot, in order to fit in with the Earth crowd to not to be discovered as an alien robot, he decides to put on a dog suit. He feels like, you know, people in on Earth have dogs. And so he devises this dog suit that happens to be green, that zips up. It's like this costume. Anyway, if I, I, I hope you all know what I'm talking about, but okay. Um, in the cartoon, his name is Gur, G-I-R, Gur. In the cartoon, he comes across so happy. He's very, he's very unintelligent, which makes him happy. That's that whole ignorance is bliss kind of situation. And in the episodes, he's just oblivious to whatever's going on and he's so happy. And in a lot of episodes, he talks about candy and cupcakes. And there's several episodes where he dreams of cupcakes and candies and he's just so happy. He's got this big goofy grin on his face and he's all just, I think he's probably cracked out on sugar is honestly what I think it is, but it, it doesn't matter. But because I have a candy theme and cupcakes, it just was appropriate to put Gur on me. And I just relate to Gur because he's just happy. So that's what this little green guy is. So there's his zipper, there's a little tail. This is his dog suit, his little zipper, and he's just happy. And he's just dreaming of cupcakes and candy. And so that's what's going on, that's what that is. That's an Invader Zim themed buddy. But and he's losing a little bit of pigment. That was a really, that was a hard tattoo. It was very painful, because it's just here on the inside of my arm. And the skin on the inside of your arms is just very thin because it's not usually exposed to, you know, the sun or um, the environment. And so he was really painful and kind of scarred up a little bit. There's a little place right here where it kind of won't hold some pigment. But I do, I did touch him up maybe three times and now I've just stopped caring. His green doesn't need to be as vibrant. I mean, it's fine. It's fine. You know, in all of these... All of these tattoos are actually pretty old on this arm. And that's why I sought out a color specialist. He's incredible. Um, he works with heavy pigment, bright colors. And you know, he looks at me as this perfect canvas because I am so pale. I mean, he loves it. He's just like, whatever I put on you is just gonna pop. But um, he, he just lays it in so well and it has lasted so, so long. I have been with him over 10 years you know the the sugar skull is probably eight years old and it's still really vibrant to me you know all of this stuff is probably going on 10 years 
but I do stay out of the sun, so please take that as, <laughs> you know, part of, part of it too. So, um, and he, he definitely did my hands. I've talked about my hands a couple of times in um, other videos. They are from my dogs. I had um, two beautiful beagles and um, I got one of them as a puppy. My ex-husband gave them to me at about like six weeks old, maybe seven weeks old. And he lived until he was 17. Uh, and his name was Trace, which is on this hand and Trace is T-R-E-S, and it's Spanish for the number three, uno, dos, tres, and um, three because he was a tri-colored beagle. Beagles come in brown, black, and white, or a lemon beagle, which is kind of that yellowy tan and white, um, but I had a tri-colored beagle, so his name was Trace. And uh, usually, you know, I, I try to, you know, make it sound very Spanish, but when I was angry, <laughs> it ended up trace, like T-R-A-C-E, uh, which uh, he was really, really bad. He was, he was so um, smart. He was devious smart. And that was so much fun to kind of see in his personality. He, like a toddler, he would test me, even though he knew he was doing something wrong. Like, like I'd be in the kitchen, you know, chopping vegetable or something and he would kind of be standing in the kitchen. I kind of had my eye on him, you know, and he would kind of like lean over towards the garbage can and I'd look at him and he'd look at me and I was like, what are you doing? And he'd kind of look and then the, you know, I'd go back to chopping and he would like go over to the garbage can like this and look at me. What are you doing? And then I'd, I'd like turn my back to him. He would put his nose on the garbage can, just sitting there, like testing me. And finally, I would like clap my hands or like stomp my feet a little. I'd like, you get out of here. And he'd go running off. And it was just so interesting. I've never had a dog have that kind of personality where they test you. Like, <laughs> he's like, watch me now, mom. I'm not touching it, not touching it. You can't, you can't do anything. You can't yell at me. It was so weird. He was so bad, but he, he was just, he was gorgeous. Um, my sister and I used to talk about his ears being like soft, soft velvet lily pads. And I would just take his ear and just, oh, just kiss it. He was just gorgeous. And then copper, this is copper, C-O-P-P-E-R. And you know, they're very different. So Trace was very intelligent and, you know, very traditional. And, and so that's kind of the font that we did for Trace. But Copper was, was very much like Gurr. He was so stupid. He fell off the short bus. And I say that with all of my heart and I love him so much. Um, he lived for 16 years. Um, my ex-husband and I got him when he was maybe five or six months and he lived until 16, about 16 and a half years, and which is incredible, just incredible. But Copper was very sweet and he never wanted to disappoint. And he was the, always kind of the me too. So Trace was kind of the alpha or the leader. Um, and whatever Trace was doing, Copper would watch and be like, oh, is this what we're doing? And kind of like follow in Trace. And then when Trace would like, get bored with that, he'd walk away and leave Copper there, kind of like, what are we doing now? Like, he was always just that follower, and he was so sweet. He was so sweet. He never actually did anything bad, ever. Um, I knew who the troublemaker was. It was always Trace. He was the instigator. Um, I always talk about their relationship, like, going back to, like, a cartoon, if you've ever seen Animaniacs, there was a cartoon way back in the day called Animaniacs that had a little clip called Pinky and the Brain, and they were two lab mice who were trying to take over the world. <sighs> okay. I really need to, like, watch different stuff. Okay, so... The brain mouse uh, was always the leader and he would always try to like take over the world and Pinky would be the one that would be like, I'm gonna help you. And he would always be like whoever would have to do the stunt. 
So in my head, like Trace was the ringleader and he would like maybe convince Copper, you know, we're gonna try to get into the refrigerator today while mom's at work and then like devise a catapult and like Copper goes flying up to the, uh, you know, refrigerator and try to get in to get the sandwich meat. But anyway, okay. So that's, that's my dogs. And so they passed away uh, maybe four years. Trace passed away first maybe five years ago and copper lived for another eight months so um so they're that's they're forever with me um if you remember some of the videos that i've shown um in the hair salon uh, i have oil paintings of my dogs that a good friend of mine's husband uh painted for me so they're always with me they're all around the hair salon and on my body and just in my heart so they're really cool um my fingers um probably really won't talk about although that's probably the biggest question but that's probably because that's what you all see the most you know um but this says love and this is the card anyway so okay so <laughs> It's like such a long video, but I will just talk about this arm really, really quick. And it's just a flamenco dancer. Again, I called up Dennis Pace and I was like, hey, I'm gonna want a flamenco dancer, make her huge, make her boobs beautiful, like make her sexy, give her some dark hair, red lips, something in the teal family and go. And I show up, he said it was ready and I show up and I was like, that's it, put it on my arm. And so he created a color Esmeralda and I just think she's, look at her boobs, like hubba hubba, right? And this is a big flamenco fan or abanico. And she has a beautiful, beautiful color. Like look at the detail of the shine of her hair and her lips. Uh huh. And these fringes on the menton are freehand. He freehanded all of these little flicks or flecos. And that was really painful back here by my armpit. Beautiful detail in this ruffle on her sleeve. She comes down right here at my kind of elbow pit and kind of comes around and more of her ruffle we ended up doing, and, and Dennis is so smart. Dennis is really smart when it comes to placement. And we talked so much about, you know, being in the mirror at the hair salon. He, he wanted to make sure that the focal points made sense, whether my arm was in a down position or up cutting hair. And so we, we definitely, when we placed the stencil or the outline on, you know, we wanted her to make sense from here but he also knew that I cut hair like this. So he wanted to make sure that this was perfect, which I think is incredible. I mean, that's what I get to see all day, which I love. His detail of the roses are just beautiful. So we did a second rose kind of on this inside and we did some motion swirls or shading so that when I'm dancing, you know, she dances with me. And I just love the way she looks and dances with me. Okay. I think that's covered quite a bit. Uh, so I'm gonna go. It's almost like 30 minutes of Holly's tattoos. And uh, I know I'm gonna get a lot of questions about my hair. It's from Guy Tang, Superpowers, uh, Mystic Blue. So there's that. And um, I hope that you enjoyed this. Thanks for hanging out with me and talking about my tattoos that are so important and so much fun. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments and see you later, bye.